Of course, Macedon is the fortress of Alexander Tultawar, and the entire experience of the game is geared towards its expansion at the expense of the Persians. Obviously, as faction leader, we find Alexander of Macedon in his historical position. Although historically he was located closer to Pella, as he was present at his father's assassination at Agia. He is meant to take his army off to fight the Thracians at Byzantium or the Illyrians at Epidamus. This happened historically, as before invading Asia, he defeated the Thracians all the way to the Danube before turning west and subjecting the Illyrians again. Alexander starts off with many traits to represent his past experience and personality, such as understanding of tactics and sharp, and the personal ones like social drinker and good looking, all seem to be historically accurate. Alexander has his own unit model which does fit his description. Pella was indeed made the capital of Macedon a century earlier. Macedonian ownership of Sparta is meant to represent the subjection of the Greeks to Philip II's League of Corinth in the aftermath of the Battle of Chironia in 338 BC. Ironically though, Sparta was the only Greek state not to have joined the League. An interesting story has it that Philip II told the Spartans that if I enter Laconia, I will raise Sparta. To which the Spartans famously replied, if. Sparta having stone walls is historically inaccurate, and the low public order is either supposed to represent their independence, or the revolt of the Thebans in 335 BC, which led to Thebes being raised to the ground, and its inhabitants sold into slavery by Alexander. Sparta starts the game with a temple to Zeus, which boosts law, representing the order and discipline Spartans lived under. Sparta by this point had become a shadow of its former self, and was declining rapidly. This I believe is portrayed in game through the fact that they are due to upgrade their settlement to the next tier, representing them falling behind. In Asia, we find the general Parmenion with his army. He was indeed sent ahead by Philip II with 10,000 men to Asia. We find him in that situation in game, and the first Persian he encounters, Memnon of Rhodes, was the very same Greek mercenary general who defeated his army before Alexander could arrive. Parmenion has many traits to represent his skills, however he has one trait, proven loyalties, that is accurate for the time, but his loyalty was rumoured to have been something that began to waver, resulting in his death. The Watchtower in Crete has no historical meaning, because the Cretans' only link with Alexander was that they were Greek also. This was probably there just so the player can see uh, the incoming Persian fleet. Talking of fleets, the Macedonian fleet is intentionally weak and at the Dardanelles crossing. This was their only use to ferry Alexander to Asia. Macedon's sea power was limited and dwarfed even by city-states like Athens and definitely could not challenge the Persians. Macedonia's military is relatively faithful to the new model army that Philip II built only a few years prior. It relies on the Macedonian phalanx and the famed companion cavalry on the right flank. There are however some units that are particularly interesting or that stand out. Thessalian cavalry, the second best cavalry available named after the region of Thessaly, just south to Macedon and famous for its horsemen in all of Greece. Thessaly was conquered by Philip II, which is why they were prominent in the Macedonian army. Adrianian javelinmen, in-game just the standard Macedonian Peltus unit. These were actually drawn from the Adrianese tribe in the north, known for their skill with a javelin and an elite unit of the army. Companion cavalry was a famed component of the Macedonian army, made out of the noble-born companions to Alexander himself. 
but in game they are superseded by the overpowered Alexander unit. Historically, Alexander's companion bodyguards were only numbered between 5 and 10 men. Allied cavalry is a reference to the Greeks being in a league with Macedon, and this unit portrays the forces sent to war by the other Greek city-states. Mardian archers. This is a weird one. Historically, they were Iranian troops who helped the Persians fight Alexander. In-game, in the custom battles, they are part of Alexander's roster, which I found to be very odd, although they're not in the campaign. There with the Persians in the campaign. There's many other units who appear in the roster that are accurate. Hypapists, Cretan archers and the Prodome cavalry. This is a light cavalry scouting unit, although it was used historically as more of a skirmisher type of unit. The four temples Macedon have access to are also accurate. Demeter, goddess of harvest, provides a farming boost. Zeus, king of the gods, provides a law boost. Artemis, Goddess of the Hunt improves missile weapons to represent hunting, and Ares, God of War, provides extra experience for troops. Overall, very accurate. And that is everything for this week's episode of Total War Profiled. Overall, I love the accuracy and in-depth research the developers have done in creating Macedon. An easy 4.5 stars out of 5. And I look forward to returning someday to this game and covering the Persian Empire. Should be fun. Thank you to Chapley one for doing the majority of the script and research for today's video. Hope you all enjoyed. Subscribe for more. These are every Saturday. Like the video. Share with anyone you think may be interested. It helps the channel grow. I've been Melkor. Goodbye. <laughs>